Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Lytic Fusel channel. Now in today's video we're going to continue on our expenses calculator project. Now in the last video we have added uh, an export support. So basically I can open up here the, the HTML file. Could I even... I, I want to preview it like raw. Yeah. No, not that raw. Ah, oh, come on. GitHub, you're not allowed to... Can I not allow to render this somehow? Okay. Uh, I think I have it somewhere down here. We exported our expenses uh, in here. So now we have a few nice things. Actually, did I save that? Now I've saved it. Okay, now we are good. Now we have these expenses stored still and we could have exported them. We could export them to HTML and to CSV. And we have a nice little output that shows us how our expenses were calculated. Now what we want to do next is uh, we want to make this uh, toolable. Our application is currently an interactive application even though it has no GUI. And what I want to do today is I want to make it toolable. Now, uh, there are multiple ways on how you could make an application uh, a tool. So now the, the simplest version is to have a REPL mode. No, normally we are currently already in a kind of REPL mode, but what is currently us uh, holding us back is kind of like a bit of the feedback. So currently you can see... Um, uh, that if I if I if I do something right, I always have this carrot that's showing me that I'm doing something. Then I basically uh, enter my command, and then it's kind of like outputting that in a format. However, this format that I have is designed for humans to read. And what basically a REPL interface would do it is a format that is designed so a machine can read it. It could be, for example, JSON. So that commands are in JSON, right? You could have something like command list, or maybe command add and then provide something like label lel xd and the value of like 10.99 for example this is something how a REPL interface could know or could work and what it would then do basically is uh it it, it would after that uh also respond with a json so for example like with something like status Okay, or status zero for, for, for like a normal application status, that's good. Or affected rows one to kind of like indicate that something has been done. And the communication would be just on a JSON JSON base. However, that's not something that we can do. Um, we need to do this a bit more manually because as you can see, uh, we don't have any JSON support in here and I don't want to add any libraries. So what we need to do is we need to have a, a, a new version of our main.cpp that basically uh, runs in a so-called REPL mode that is a bit more orientated towards a machine-to-machine -machine communication and not a machine-to-human communication. Now, um, basically what we want to do is uh, instead, if I still want to keep my arguments. They shall still be the same, right? These still be the same. However, what I basically want to change is I want the output. So what I basically want to do is I want to enable something like a REPL mode, REPL mode, REPL equals false. And as soon as I am on that REPL mode, maybe because uh, I'm doing uh, argument parsing, uh, I maybe want to put this above here. here. Now, um, basically in the REPL mode, what I want to do is uh, I want to do a few things. So first of all, I don't want to output this. So if not REPL, then I can print this. This is fixed quite simple. If I now would be in REPL mode, maybe let's hard code this to on so that we can debug it. If I now hard code this to one, we have one thing, we don't get the current. This is good because basically in the REPL mode, the other application is passing all the output. And if we don't get the current, everything is good. And now the only thing that we need to do is fix all these messages that we, that we are getting. Uh, now, uh, what I want to do very quickly is um, I first of all want to write myself a, a, a helper function. And the helper function will be the void complain. Now, void complain with a, yeah, let's do an SCD string. Message is basically now my complain message that shall complain if something is going on. But instead of just taking the string, it also takes the, the boolean if it is in the REPL mode. So basically what I'm going to do, if is REPL, the complain function will just output zero. Because zero stands for wrong. Something has happened which shall not happen. 
And also I want to do an SCD handle because the handle is kind of like our measure unit of measurement, our kind of like message terminator. So I just want to return a zero or maybe let's, uh, maybe minus one. Let's see. No, it's a Boolean. Let's see. This is a Boolean. Zero means it's not good and one means it's good. Uh, so I have to avoid complain that returns a zero. Now, what I want to do additionally is I want to uh, provide a way to also output this if I'm on normal mode. So if I'm on normal mode, I am going to, I'll put the message. Very simple. Now the only thing that I need to do is I now need to use my complain function everywhere where I've basically outputted some text. So for example here, failed to add. This is something where I would want to call my complain function, have my wrapper integer in here, a boolean in here, and then my message. This is the idea. Failed to add. Same goes here if the usage is wrong. I'm just going to complain with the invalid usage. And second, the REPL argument. REPL. Now we need to basically do this for everything. It's going to take a while. But since this is a project, I do not want to cut this out. And we can already talk about what, what needs to be done else. Now you can see currently I am just using the complain function. However, what we also need is we kind of like need the good feedback. So our REPL mode basically means that we are doing a command and um, then we are going to get a zero or one depending on how the how, how it resulted. What we can also get is, uh, for example, now that I'm on the eval, instead of uh, if we are on the REPL mode, Instead of uh, outputting the whole total on the REPL mode, I'm basically just outputting the raw value. And if I'm not on the REPL mode, then I'm going to output the whole user uh, understandable text of what's going on here. Again, here we're going to need our complaint function. Now, um, of course, if I complain, I also need to kind of like uh, say if something is good. So basically, later on, we're going to have a... Um, a, a, a else and instead of complain we're gonna say success and then it's basically gonna tell it the right way but i'm gonna go to that in a second we want to first do what we need to do complain and now let's add in the rebel and we shall we are not that that far away just a few ones nearly done nearly done another complain rebel it's always a bit, yeah. It's there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, if you are designing this uh, completely different, you could also have like two classes, or you would probably if you have like something like a JSON format, a zero one and raw data format, maybe an XML format, or however your REPL formats are. Maybe even like a scripting engine where you can like uh, put in a Lua script and it's evaluating that. If you are having multiple of these, you probably wanna have different classes that are handling that. But in this case, since we just have REPL on or REPL off, uh, a simple function like that is good. And I also don't want to go into too much details and change too many things here. REPL. This is still quite much. I didn't remember that we had that many, uh, that many things here. That many commands, that many prints. REPL. There. Here now, oh, this is bad because here we are kind of like constructing something. Um, but I am just going to be lazy and just going to say command is unknown. Why do we need to tell the user which command was unknown? It, it just has typed it in, so right. Okay, so now that we have added that, we uh, just need the, the other side of it. We need to have the success side. How would we implement the success side? Well, on... Uh, by default, we just need the wrapper because we're not outputting anything on success. And basically what I want to do is if wrapper, then I want to SCD C out of one and everywhere else not. Now I just need to call the success function. So basically every time uh, here, for example, no, this is not where I need it. But here, for example, on add, at some point, I am going to check that here and I'm going to complain and else I'm going to success. I'm just going to copy the whole else part because I'm going to use it quite a lot. Expenses delete, else success. Expenses list, list is going to change quite a few bit of time. Exit, open, there we already had it. it. Save. There we have 
it. There we have it. The reporting is not checked, and that's it. Now, the only thing that we need to still let up is the list. However, all the other uh, shall already work in the REPL mode. So, if we are taking a look at this, you can see we're not getting the carrot. List is still gonna get in the, the, the old way. Uh, but if I would open DDDDE, you can see that I get zero because CDE doesn't exist. If I do open my, I get a one because it exists. List is gonna be the old style, as I already told you. Eval is just gonna give us the, the value. If I save, it's also just gonna give me one. If I do new, okay, new isn't, okay, new isn't, 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 isn't created. How, where do I was doing new? Okay, new shall always do a success as well. That's important. Yeah, this is something that I have completely overseen. Also, if I export every time it's gonna success, I do need to do success even through if I don't check it. Everything needs to success at some point. Every command. Uh, success, success, success. Exit. Shall maybe even also write a success before it breaks. Uh, evaluate is not doing it because it's returning a value. That is already kind of like a success message. Now list is also gonna give us a a, a kind of like an enumeration later on. Um, yeah, so that's looking good. And now the only thing that's left to do is to actually implement list. How do I want to implement list? Well, since the sheet is doing it, I basically just give the sheet the option to also go into a REPL mode. Maybe as last parameter, REPL false. And the idea is that we can go in here and down there on list somewhere at the REPL. And down here, if REPL, we're gonna do it in a certain way. Else we're gonna do it like that. And how do we do it if we are rappelling? Well, uh, no, it's not see out. It needs to be the OS. And how are we gonna do this? Actually, I do might want to replace this with backslash new lines because I don't know if this is a really a see out if I can allow if I am allowed to use it. Now, how? What is the format? Actually, I'm just gonna use the CSV format. So IDX plus plus. Then a comma. Then the label. Another comma and a value, and then followed by a new line. So now we have it in a different format, in a more machine readable format. And now the only way is to call it correctly. So in list, I am basically going to specify my repo. Uh, maybe one thing that I want to do if there is nothing in here yet, and I'm just having an empty output with a. Uh, maybe. Yeah, if there's nothing, we get nothing. Maybe this is a, maybe, maybe, but this could be a problem, right? Because if there's a list that is empty, I might want to return zero, right? Because if I now do list and there's nothing in there, it's bad. If I open my and list, then I'm going to get it in the new format, in the REPL format. And what I might want to do is I might want to return zero if the expenses list is empty. So maybe here, if REPL and index is zero so we never went in that thing then i want to do an os zero scd no not scd handle new line maybe something like that so that we have a bit of a safeguard in here for the REPL mode so if i do a list then i'll get a zero if i open my and i list then i get my list now like add dvv so the, it also gives me zero. Delete DVV also gives, oh, not zero, but one in this case. It's all like giving me a correct way. Now what we need to do is we need to have a way to get into REPL mode. How do we want to do it? Go into REPL mode? Well, we need to pass our uh, comment line arguments. Now, um, in general, what I'm going to do is I am now basically always going to go through my comment line arguments. So I'm going to do a four. Uh, int e equals one, i smaller arg z, i plus plus, so that we basically pass each argument, and if arg v, 
uh, first character is not a dash. A dash is like used for um, it's, a, it's used kind of like for indicating that we want to kind of like provide an argument. If this is not the case, then we're going to open this up. We see it as a file name. And if it starts with a, with a dash, we see it as a command. And I'm going to basically say std string or not as a command, as an, as an, as an, an s arc system argument. And the sys arc is going to be equal to arc v at i and to one. And this is basically going to get converted to an std string. And what I basically want to say if s arc equals uh, REPL, so I want to go into my REPL mode, then I'm going to say REPL equals true. And this is by default false. And now I should have a way to go into REPL mode to actually do this. If I now recompile this, uh, it should by default not go into REPL mode, especially if I open this up here. I should have the old classical mode. Okay, you can see that opening didn't work. Why didn't open work? Uh, mod equals dash. Uh, because I am an idiot. It needs to be the other way around. If it's not a dash, then we open it up, else it is a dash and we see it as, an, as a mode. Uh, means by default I am here. Uh, I don't want to do this in debugging here. I want to do this here at the console. This shall give me my still my old behavior, my old. I can think around with that. At Peter, he is also very generous and gave me twenty. And if I eval, I now have money again, which I hopefully save. And if I want to do this in uh, in the REPL mode. I would, for example, go to my build directory, release, binaries, expenses. I can go to the CMD, expenses.exe is by default open up the default mode. If I then provide a, a path, like dot dot slash is the release, dot dot slash is the build, file directory, work my, I should have my data in here. Yeah, but it's not the REPL mode. And then if I supply the REPL, I'm in REPL. I have the different formats. I can work with it. I can add uh, power because power does cost me time, uh, money. It's quite expensive these days. So we are back again at some bad money. But the REPL mode works. And that's the idea. That's the whole idea behind everything that we have written. Then that is, is it. This is our expense calculator. We are finished with the first project that we have done here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. We have written a expense calculator, which has a wrapper mode so that you can interact with it. Now, of course, you can bring this forward. You could try and add a comment line mode that is even more powerful, where you can say something like add equals something like uh, my add like uh, Peter plus... 15 that you can do something like that and it would basically add that and directly terminate the application this would be something that would be really cool that you can basically add every command if you write in dash and then a command equals to the arguments of the command that it will just execute this command once and uh, then return this would be a nice feature however it is of course complicated and you would probably need to do a whole refactoring and make the whole comment parsing uh, maybe to a feature of a class which you can basically feed with a comment you have an instance that's directly available that would be something that's a bit more useful and then you could basically add multiple comments you could add add you could add another add and then you could use that as a comment line. This is something that might be interesting for you to try out if you can manage to do that. I'm not going to do it in this project because we have already done four videos and I don't want to make this video too long. And yeah, yeah, that's the whole story behind that. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a nice day. Bye.